Hey, good morning, everyone. Let's start the, the formal uh, communications seminar. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, I'm Dan Clare. I'm your communications director. Um, I have some of my team members here. Not all of them are here, and I'll talk about those guys in just a second. But I just want to thank you for a great convention. It's been pretty exciting. Um, I mean, really exciting. When, when can you remember a, a convention that, that had an opening session that was that packed? I mean, it's been great. There's a ton of momentum. And I just want you guys to know that when it, it's very much, DAV is very much a, a team, it's, it's a team sport. Um, the reason why DAV is doing so well right now, while I think a lot of other veteran service organizations are having challenges, um, even some of the upstart uh, veteran service organizations are having some pretty noteworthy challenges, is that we have a membership out there who's committed to service, service first. Um, communications is great, but what we're really about as an organization is making sure veterans get their benefits, making sure they get jobs, making sure they're able to take care of their family, honoring their sacrifices uh, through our volunteer efforts. That is the reason why um, everything that I go through today and every sign that we have where we're making progress and momentum, the reason why we're able to do it is because we have an active and engaged membership. The more we're able to engage, the more we're able, when we need to, uh, any Godfather fans in here? When you're, when you're able, they, they call it, go to the mattresses, right? You know, I mean, I don't want anyone in here sleeping with the fishes or anything, but you go to the mattresses. When you need to do it, when you, we need to fight. When we need to fight for legislation, we need to go to the mattresses. Um, and, and to do that, we have to have an engage, we have to be able to activate. We have to be able to get up and go when, when the time comes. We have to be expeditionary that way. Um, so that's something that's very important. And, and, and I'm, I guess one of the other things I'll say, and, and I'm, I don't mean to step on Barry's toes or Mark's toes, but it, you guys are the reason why we're successful. And, and we at National Headquarters, we're trying to honor the, the work that you do with the work that we're doing. And it's it's... It's very easy. I'll get into. Let me uh, let me get back to my team, and I'll kind of get into the meat of the presentation. Um, Jim Procurnier is on our team here. Just kidding, but pretty close. Steve Wilson, Assistant National Director of Communications. Um, Steve comes to us from the Air Force. I, I know a lot of you know Steve already. Steve is a trainer, um, of, among other things. He's a historian. He's a PhD candidate. Um, but Steve is an Air Force veteran who trained public affairs officers um, through the Defense Information School. So he has a really good background um, getting people prepared to engage and talk with the media. Todd Hunter, uh, we stole Todd from the White House. Todd is, the, is our primary uh, video editor. So when you see Gary's uh, presentation and he thanked me for some of those videos up there between Todd and Ashley, Burns, who's not here, uh, but she's the Deputy National Director of Communications. They're the folks who are producing those videos. If you've seen those videos and you like them, please give these folks a round of applause. Yeah. Brian Lett is a combat disabled Marine Corps veteran. Todd's a Marine Corps veteran. Marion Stever Air Force veterans. I'm both. <laughs> Charity Edgar is uh, right, coming right up the aisle. Charity Edgar, fresh off the boat from Afghanistan. We got her back in one piece. I'm going to get a little emotional if I start thinking about it, but Charity did just finish a deployment to Afghanistan where she served with tremendous honor and distinction. She was mentioned by the President of the United States the other day. She carries her own chair up here because that's how we roll. Mary Deaver. Mary, raise your hand. Mary is an Air Force veteran. We also stole her from the Defense Information School where she was teaching people how to, how to be good at public affairs. Uh, Mary uh, helped us. Are, have any, are any of you familiar with the Spartan Weekend? Um, <laughs> Jim up front, very, very familiar with the Spartan Weekend. We, we did a, a very cool event this year where, um, where we went to Washington, D.C., um, and we connected with some folks who FDNY, uh, the fire department in New York, uh, had some steel from the World Trade Centers. 
they took that steel and melted it down into a sword. And on that sword, at the National Disabled Veterans Life Memorial, about 75 or 100 veterans um, gathered around on Mother's Day, and we honored Gold Star Moms. Um, and we also made a pledge to one another. Um, Bobby Barrera was a big part of that. We made a pledge to one another that before we were going to make a decision um, that would end our lives, we'd talk to one another. And that's pretty cool, you know? Give her a hand. So I'm, I'm, ex I, and I'm, I'm gushing a little bit, but I'm extremely proud of the work that these folks do. Um, they're not the whole team. Uh, we have a couple folks that are back at national headquarters who are doing good, good work. Um, James Killen, who I'm going to talk, you know, I'll, I'll pull a slide up on him. Um, Joe Chinelli, how many of you are familiar with Joe? Sat in on some of his seminars. Um, Joe has gone on, and, and we're proud of him. He's taken over as executive director of American Veterans. Um, so we're pleased with Joe doing that. Um, create a little vacuum because uh, DAV is the best social networking uh, charity in the veteran service organization community. Um, and that's, again, thanks to the work that you guys are doing. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit more, but uh, James Killen came on staff. He's also a Marine Corps veteran and Air Force uh, veteran. He's a public affairs officer in the uh, Air National Guard in Kentucky. But he joined the team, um, and he's working on social networking. Um, and I think that right now, one of the differences between DAV and other organizations is that we are legit. Our audience cares about veterans on a level that uh, is unparalleled with any other group. You just won't find people who care more about veterans than DAV, who care more about service and just doing the right thing by veterans. And that's the reason why um, we are probably going to have some very, very exciting news coming down the pike at some point um, about some breakout, breakaway, uh, big page turners for, for our social networking efforts. But we're doing pretty darn good out right now anyway. What do we do? What does the communication staff do? How many of you are familiar with DAV Magazine? I think, and, and that's another one with these folks, Shannon isn't here, Doreen isn't here. Uh, Shannon and Doreen, uh, Doreen Brionis is our production manager, and Doreen is a phenomenal person. If you need help with your logos, with DAV logos, that stuff's available on the membership drive, but Doreen can help you with that. If you're working on a billboard, uh, if you need just some help, some guidance, some feedback, whatever you want, give us a call. Doreen, uh, Doreen will work with Shannon, our, our senior graphic designer, and we're going to make it happen. But I think DAV Magazine, and, and these are the folks who write it, I think it's the best magazine also in the veteran service organization. So please give them a round of applause for that. You will not find, you will not find therapeutic shoes in DAV Magazine. You'll find substance about what DAV is doing in support for our mission. I like a replica 1911 pistol as much as anyone else, but uh, we're sticking to our guns on that and on our communications efforts are doing really well. Um, as I mentioned, social networking. We, uh, we had a long-standing goal. We started, uh, I think, about three or four years ago, we were hovering around 78,000 people on Facebook. We have one, at the time, we had 1.2 million members. So, Facebook's cheaper to join than DAV. Why can't, it's free to join DAV's Facebook, so why aren't more people doing it? We made a concerted effort to get out there and, 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 and do that, and we, uh, last year we were really proud. We got 1.2 million Facebook followers, which is fantastic. Unfortunately, you guys recruited so hard that you made DAV hit 1.3 million members, and we had to redouble our efforts. But we hit it this year, and I'm really proud of you guys who are part of that. Thank you very much for it. Um, one of the things that, as I mentioned before, engagement is a thing that separates DAV's Facebook from, um, from our competitors. There are veterans groups who have more followers on Facebook, but when DAV, or when, I'm sorry, when Facebook does their metrics, um, and the, Facebook changes their metrics every once in a while, but for the six or eight months where they were comparing VSOs um, on, on which ones were the most effective from Facebook's perspective. DAV, uh, DAV was number one above some other very good, at, at marketing in ways, very, very good charities who were out there. 
And it, it wasn't because we have more followers. Uh, we don't. But it, it was because our audience is so real. The people in our audience, you know, uh, they're engaged and they're, they're paying attention and there's a give and take and a feedback. And that feedback is very important for a lot of reasons. Let me just pull up James' uh, picture and stuff so you can write down his contact information if you want. That engagement's very important because it goes both ways. If I send you the magazine, uh, we can talk about what's going on with DAV and, and we'll get some emails uh, from feedback at DAV.org. And if you have chapter news, by the way, we don't get enough chapter news. Um, Steve does uh, an internal search all the time. We're looking at what's going on. We have more right now, uh, more interest in the media and more, more stories coming out about our chapters than at any time that I, I can remember being a part of DAV. And we've been searching for that kind of content for a long time. But a, 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 a big difference now, I think, is that a lot of you have been told uh, we're a little bit intimidated by the process and you've seen, you've attended Steve's seminars or you've just seen what's going on and said, if I want to accomplish my mission, I have to get out there. I have to make people know that I, there's a lot of work that we do all the time. Um, but the effort that we make to make the media aware of what we're doing uh, pays off in dividends because it, it's... I'm going to use one of those hokey military terms. It's a, it's a force multiplier. It's getting, what is it about? It's getting more people to our meetings. Having 1.3 million members on Facebook, if all we're doing is talking about what we ate for lunch, is not doing veterans any good. But if I'm able to engage volunteers through that, if I'm able to gauge the opinion of our Facebook followers, it makes DAV more effective. And we can watch when we put out a statement or anything, and we know that we're going to get pros and cons. But, but it helps us keep an eye on the pulse of what's going on in the veterans community. It's an it's a extremely active um, group. So, like I said, it's about meeting the mission. And, and what we want to do more and more is help you meet the mission. We have some programs and things that I'll talk about that I think are really cool. Um, but, but Facebook and communications, this isn't glory work, uh, unless you're Jim Sersley over here. Let's give him a round of applause. He, Jim told me if I didn't recognize uh, him, he was going to shoot me with a crossbow, so I had to say something. Um, Mark, uh, or Barry, yesterday uh, went through a video on, on Thankavet, and I'm just, it's part of our, it's part of our engagement. Thankavet is a really cool way to say thank you. It's like sending someone a digital personalized card. Um, it's really cool. They, they just take your pictures and a few messages and set them to music and you can share it. We've been working harder and harder because, you know, you find out where people's limitations are and one of the limitations was that not everyone had the photos, you know, to, they didn't have four or five, you know, the two or three photos or whatever that you need to, uh, to honor a veteran on their computers. So we made that easier this year. You can just kind of pick a, pick a photo from, from a list, but it's, uh, it's a great program. Um, it's going to be opening up this Veterans Day again, and, and we're excited about it. But it, it is, it, this is a program that's had tremendous success outside of DAV. It's not had tremendous success among our members, I wouldn't say. Not enough people are getting on doing this. And I don't know why. Maybe there's some feedback you all can provide us that will help us with that. But getting involved in, these, in this type of thing even if you're just spreading the word to other people to do it, um, it makes a huge difference. We want to, we want, and we want you guys to own this stuff, guys and gals. So, uh, you want to talk about public service announcements? Um, let's let's look at my one piece of video because I'm going to bore the heck out of you with uh, me talking the rest of the time. But I'm pretty proud of this one. I am a veteran, and my victory was finding the strength to be a champion. I am a veteran. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. America's veterans are on their most important tour, the tour of their lives. My victory was finishing my education. Mine is proving a disability is not a limitation. At DAV, we're on a mission to help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory is having my new battle buddy. As veterans face their challenges, DAV is there to help for victories great and small. I'm a veteran, 
and my victory is getting the help I need to put my life back together. DAV offers veterans of all generations a lifetime of support. I am a veteran. My victory is being there for my family. When America's veterans win, we all win. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. What do you think? It's like the 16th time you've seen it probably since convention started. Um, but I, I wanted to show it uh, just because um, what I'm particularly proud about with these new public service announcements is that I think that we've made an evolution. Um, and DAV's done that over the last several years where we're trying to incrementally get better all the time. You know, you just want to keep pushing until you're better and better and better. And I think that this message is more on track with what DAV does than anything that we've done in the past or that anyone else is doing anywhere. And it is kicking tail out there. Um, in an election cycle, in an election year, we anticipated that we were going to be down um, to two years ago levels. You know, we, we, we looked at, at uh, you know, what we were doing far before the elections and we tried to calculate, well, where are we going to be with our PSAs? We've already succeeded our PSA goals for the year um, before the election cycle really began, and I think that we are going to kill it this year with this stuff. How many of you have seen a DAV billboard? Isn't that awesome? You fly in here to Atlanta and you're going to see Jim Sersley hanging out on the wall all the time. I don't know why they put it close to the bathrooms. That's something you guys might ask Jim about later on. But there, there's just, there's, uh, there's a tremendous amount of interest. Atlanta Airport, um, I had been told uh, last time I was here in Atlanta that it is the busiest airport in the world right now. And so the busy, at the busiest airport in the world, the AV's there hanging out. How many of you have met someone because they saw a DAV billboard? I think that's going to change over time. You know, I, I think that there's, a, there, the, as the momentum builds, we're going to see more and more where our public service announcements are going to help us with, with some of our membership goals, with some of our volunteer goals. We have, uh, I have, and I, maybe it's something you want to stop up in the communications department and check out, but we have some placements of, of DAVs, uh, especially the one that you see up there on the right um, of that veteran and his family. We've, we've very intentionally wanted to honor women veterans and be diverse in how we represent veterans. Not everyone's visibly disabled, and, and we wanted to make sure that we were inclusive. And another thing that inclusive does for us um, is it allows us to get placements places where we might not otherwise. Um, the guy on the left in this placement isn't probably going to end up in Ebony Magazine. This woman is going to more likely end up in Women's Magazine. This one here is going to end up in Outdoors Magazine or somewhere else. The guy on the right there just in, ended up in Entertainment Weekly and in People Magazine, full page ads honoring DAV. It's extremely cool. To open up a magazine, a big national magazine, a 60 or 80 $5,000 value depending on the publication that was donated to DAV. A difference between what when you see another veteran service organization who seems to be everywhere um, and everywhere you see them they're asking for money. When you look at a charity like that, that's a solicitation. Um, there's a mix between a solicitation and, and some of that may be considered service on some level because it, it is promoting awareness. But DAV public service announcements are donated. So every time that you see a billboard, did that cost DAV? It cost us material costs. But it was donated. The space was donated. We ran out of our budget for uh, this year uh, in our first quarter because people like our, our billboards so much. Um, so the first quarter we were done. There's, there's DAV in, in Times Square. How about that? There's a veteran who posted on his Instagram account, uh, found a billboard when he was driving by. Um, there's the, our previous campaign um, at a busy airport, another different busy airport. These things are just flying off the shelves. We, we, we exceeded our budget and, and we took the governor off and, and did more. But this is very, a very wise allocation of, of funds. We received a $20,000 donation recently because 
a, someone who was in a position to allocate a donation saw a DAV at O'Hare International Airport, saw our billboard and said, gosh, that DAV, let me look into that a little bit more. Looked us up, happened to be a three-star general who's been on CNN a few times, and he said, that's a charity that I want to support, and we're one of the veteran service organizations he supported. So if, if, you're, if you can get free advertising that makes you money, that's pretty cool too. Um, here's, here's some of those placements. Here's Time Magazine. I didn't mention them before, but that's a full page uh, donated ad in Time Magazine. Our cost for that was the design, our, our, the time that we spent designing that and, and the small resources that we spent you know, on, on the production of that. So we should all be pretty proud of that. We have, uh, we have now for about six years been working on uh, Spanish. Spanish language public service announcements, Spanish language uh, resources on the website, um, and yeah, I just I don't know why it was a it was a continuous struggle. We'd get the track down, and then there'd be several different versions of Spanish, and it, it didn't work out. Julio Iglesias Jr. has narrated DAV's public service announcements um, in Spanish. So right now, and this is fairly recent, our PSAs are going out in Spanish. The Spanish audience is, is very significant. We're, we're proud of that. We're proud that we have a DAV Spanish page now um, where people can go and check out uh, DAV and get help at the end of the day. What's it about? It's about getting help. If you or, or your, your uh, survivors or family speak Spanish, DAV should be accessible for them too, I think. Um, you can play a significant, you already do play a significant role, but you can play an even more significant role in public service announcements if you help us spread the word about them. It is one thing for National from the booming metropolis of Cold Spring, Kentucky to send out uh, to a nationwide audience a bunch of public service announcements and say, play me. It works. It's working very well. And that's just part of the outreach that we're doing on public service announcements. We're very proactive. Is Don Sias in here? Don's uh, a department adjutant in New York. Don and I just cruised around um, a couple years back, and we'll be doing it again pretty soon, I think. And we're, we're getting in front of these folks. We're trying to be as aggressive as possible and, and, and be in their face and say, hey, look, here's DAV. Here's what we look like. Please help us. Um, but when, when we're in Nebraska, there's Chuck Ogle. Chuck Ogle's right here. Chuck Ogle's daughter just happens to be involved in, a, in media buying. Oh, thanks, Doreen. Doreen Brionis, give her a round of applause. Woo! Doreen, I, I'm serious. Doreen is one of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. But here's some DAV PSAs. Um, could Todd, maybe, could you help me just, you guys just kind of throw these out there and people can check them out? There's several. There's several different kinds, so you can go through those. Um, where was I? What was I talking about? Something important. <coughs> Chuck Ogle. There he is. Chuck's, um, Chuck's daughter uh, sells media. Chuck's daughter is doing placements of DAV billboards. I was in my hometown in Lincoln, Nebraska, um, and I was so proud, um, for me it, anyway, I was so proud to see a billboard there, but every one of you should be proud when you see a billboard. You have a role because when you're in your community and you are in the face of the media, they're looking at you and they're saying, Here's someone who is providing a true service to veterans in my community. That's the kind of charity that, that people want to support at the local level. So getting our content out in front of uh, station managers is an important thing. We're going to come out with some guidance, a memo, um, and some more information. But just off the top of your heads, uh, our outstanding disabled veteran of the year, who happens to be in our PSAs, um, he went all over Michigan on his own initiative and shared our PSAs. They got picked up, picked up, picked up, picked up. If you're out there and you're, you're doing this, they get picked up. So we're gonna have some guidance on how you can do it, but all you have to do right now, if you meet someone or know someone who has access to billboard space or you meet the media, you wanna be building relationships with the media anyway, right? Um, so as part of that, if, if you're telling them about DAV public service announcements after they've you know, you've, they've seen the good work that you do. Um, that's good for us. So all you have to do, really, is send someone to davpsa.org. 
We tried to make that as easy to remember as possible. And actually, if you were to type in DAVPSA.com, .net, dot, God knows how many dot whatevers there are out there, um, you're going to get there. And, uh, and you're going to be able to download the PSAs. We don't need disks. We don't need thumb drives. We don't need anything. You can do it. However, some of you want to reasonably hand a PSA to someone when you're doing things or hand something to them. Um, so we do have packages of disks that we are willing to share. But the problem is all these things cost money. And if I just send out a bunch of uh, PSA disks that aren't being used, well, you know, that's, it's, it's really nice that we could have them, you know, um, during our chapter meetings in a stack, but I really want these things to move. I want it to go. So if you have uh, meetings set up, if you're, if you're reaching out and doing meetings with um, station managers, and there will be guidance on that, if you're willing to do it, I'm willing to send you some stuff that you can hand them as a memento. Um, they've, they already have, I promise you, through many of the relationships that we have. They have access in a variety of different formats to our public service announcements, but you will be able to hand them a disk if you set up a meeting. But I'm doing that case by case just because I can't afford to send up out a bunch of stuff, especially if I'm not sure that it's going to go out. One of the things we did last year, um, in the last year, we did around Veterans Day that we're really proud of is the Veterans Pulse Survey. It was... Uh, it was incredibly, uh, it was incredibly important. We, it got uh, picked up by the Wall Street Journal as a, and, and part of the reason why we couldn't get it to you before Veterans Day, we would have preferred to have done that, was because we had an exclusive arrangement with the Wall Street Journal and they picked it up and ran it. Um, but coming out of, uh, coming out of that, uh, we got a lot of earned media when we released the results of the survey. Um, one of the things that we did to promote it, and you can see it up top, and, and that we're doing just in general are these radio media tours. Uh, Joe Violante is not in here, but I've forced Joe to do these. I don't know if Dave's ever done them. Dave Gorman, I thought Dave was in here. Um, but what a, what a radio media tour is, is it's when you get on the phone and you set up, let's see here, 26 interviews consecutively and you go through and, and, and it's us putting DAV in front of radio stations in the biggest markets we can find over and over and over again. Um, I don't know if anyone heard, um, I did the last two. I don't know if, did anyone in here, hear on the radio anything about the Veterans Poll Survey or heard my uh, voice uh, made for television, face made for radio kind of thing? I don't, um, they, they hit a lot of people. We had more than 4,000 airings more than 19 million listeners that we hit on radio. Um, and Steve, Steve covers a lot of media stuff, but if, if anyone out there can st just, you'd, you have no idea how easy it is to start a relationship with a radio station. Burl, Burl Jimerson will tell you all about that, and maybe I'll talk about Burl if we have time um, in a little bit here. Um, but if you start a relationship with a radio station, they will put you on over and over again. They love it. They have time to fill, and they have shrinking budgets, but they have a great listening audience, and they have an important listening audience because it's a, it's a lot of our colleagues. So building relationships is, is great in that, on that front. But let me get back, and, and part of, and it all kind of ties together. We, we did another one on, on Memorial Day, um, had very similar results. You do 26 interviews, but you know how wire media works. You do 26 interviews, but if, you know, what, a handful of them were live, five live maybe, um, and live's a little bit different. Steve can talk about that in his seminar. Live's a little bit different. Um, but the, of the 26, if 10 of them are picked up by a wire service, news radio or whatever, so, you know, a radio station will pull in a national feed on, on some national radio that comes your way, um, they just get repeated over and over and over again. And in the case of Memorial Day, they get repeated over the course of the entire, um, the entire weekend. And you as a veteran and a DAV member, and most of you as DAV leaders, you're a subject matter expert. Um, and that's why I beg you to stay, stay in tune with DAV's legislative priorities and resolutions. As long as you don't go off the track with, with our, our resolutions, as long as you're bipart or 
not partisan at all. Um, you, you have the power to go out there and talk to these radio stations and do things. And what we had hoped with the Veterans Pulse survey was that when we sent that out to our chapters and departments, we were hoping that it would be a prairie fire kind of thing where people would use that when they're talking to the media. It's some really neat uh, facts. It's the only nationally representative survey that covers all generations of veterans um, and all genders of veterans. But here's some of our, some of our results, and I, I can barely see them up there, and I'm sorry, but what it says is male veterans and female veterans often report different views. Let me pick this up. Okay. I can't read it. We're all in trouble. Basically, how many of you, how many of you feel that uh, women veterans get the, the attention they deserve? We're, we're a better, there's, there's no one that's raising their hands, and that's very good. Um, but one of, the, one of the things we found out through it was more than half of women veterans, now you have a statistic to tie to the issue if you're talking to the media. You have a little bit of a hook. You have a subject to talk about when women, women's history uh, come, month comes up, when there's a, a holiday or, or when women veterans issues are up. You have some stats and things that you can turn to um, that you see when you see people on doing interviews. All of you have that now, veteranspulse.org. Uh, you all have this resource. There's, there's no print copies. You can go on there, though, pull up a PDF and print it out if you want to. If you're doing a radio interview, you can sit there with that Pulse survey right in front of you and pull stats from it. But here we have, more than half of women veterans feel they don't get the same respect as their male counterparts. Um, men feel a little bit differently about that, and, and they just don't think about that quite as much. But it's interesting that 44% of female veterans would encourage their daughters to serve in the military. And men will tell you, based on another survey result, that they're less likely to feel that women veterans are, are neglected. However, if you talk to those same men, for some reason, only 34% of them would encourage their daughters to serve in the military. What does that tell you? Isn't that a statement? Isn't that interesting? Th this Veterans Pulse Survey is full of facts that are interesting. Um, facts about VA health care, um, about how many veterans feel that, uh, let's see, um, only one in five veterans agree the federal government treats veterans well. Well, you have a stat, and you can point to a source, and you can drive people to the source, and it's positioning DAV as a thought leader, which is very important, and it's what we are, right? Who, when, when you stand up and, and everyone works with a lot of ESOs, and that's important, and there are a lot of, there's good work going on in a lot of, a lot of our, our, our brothers and sisters and other organizations, but wouldn't you say that usually the DAV folks are the ones, especially when it comes to issues specific to disabled veterans, know more about what's going on at VA than other people? Wouldn't you say that? Nod, nod. Um, now you have some stats that you can go to if you want to do media outreach. Or if you have a, an interview set up, you can, you can go to this. It's still a very valid source. I'm getting some kind of reminder up there. It's probably shut up, dummy. Um, I'll talk again about grassroots outreach, um, but, but I did, I did want to say that it, it's been incredible how much uh, reporting you guys do. You're not sending it in to us, but the people who are sending it to the local media, I almost prefer that. So when we do our scans, sometimes we're reaching out to, often, we're reaching out to departments and saying, hey, we saw that great photo that you put in the Bellevue Leader um, or, or the story you did on something else and we want to share it on our social networks or we want that picture, we want you to send it in to feedback at DAV.org um, so that we can consider it for the magazine. We just need a little bit of information that goes with it. Um, we're usually pretty proactive. We'll come back out to you, especially because we're not getting um, as much as we'd like, but we're getting a ton of grassroots outreach. Um, and I was talking before about goals and how you achieve goals. How many of you have a challenge um, staffing, fulfilling uh, volunteer drivers. Is that an issue at all? Yeah, really? I mean, let, you know, they fly through the physical process at VA, so I don't understand what the concern is, really. <laughs> he does stand up, too. Well, we want to help you with that, too. If you go to the media and you say, Look, we have this great program 
that helps people helps people get to and from their hospital appointments, veterans. This is a feel-good story. You can pick it up anytime you want. Come with us. We'll take you on a trip. Go with us and, and, and take a ride. And, and Burl Jimerson um, just, I don't want to say stumbled, is because your department does great work, but you, you got engaged with the media, and they did a series, produced for them a series of public service announcements about the transportation network in his area. Had a huge impact in what they were doing. In Denver, Colorado, is Paul Jackson in here? In Denver, Colorado, oh, there we are, Denver's, uh, or Colorado's represented here. We had CBS Cares, when they found about, out about that program, donate a van to the transportation network and run a series of public service announcements for us. If, you, if we can give you the tools to go use the media to recruit volunteers, how many of you, by show of hands, would use them? So thank you, and I'm going to hold you to it, and we're going to get some, some template press releases and things together and some guidance that says, hey, here's some talking points and things that you can say that will help you recruit volunteers. Because at the end of the day, what good's communications if we're not helping the organization achieve its goals? So that's something that we want to work more towards as well. Steve Wilson, here's Steve's contact information. Um, Write it down if you want. If you can't see it, come up and, and Steve will hand it off to you. Um, but there, there's a couple tips I have and I, I give these over and over again. If you have an event or you get a call from the media and it's about something good or something positive that you're doing, um, give us a call if you want and we'd be thrilled to help you. If you're in a crisis situation where there was a crash of a van or someone borrowed a little bit of money from their chapter. If you're in a situation like that, um, definitely call us. Because we, we need to get, uh, it, our reputation's our greatest asset, and, and we need to protect it. So if you're in a crisis communication situation, um, give Steve a call, give me a call. Um, if you want some, you know, how many of you, a lot of people have told us over and over again, Convention's great, these seminars are great, and the fact that we're, we have so many people in here tells you about the commitment DAV has to service. Um, and people, you know, people, people in this room obviously are, are substantive people who want to help out. But if you get a chance, um, call Steve if you need some help. Um, and and our, our training, our seminars, not just this one, but across the board, our seminars are made available online. This one will too, if I don't break the camera. Will be, uh, this one will be posted too. And you can share it with your members back home so that convention's not just a, a one-time deal. We want to make it as worthwhile as possible. I just want to go over a few of the things we did last year. Barry uh, hit on a lot of those. We had a great relationship with Leanne Rhymes. I don't know. If, if you're saying, I don't, I don't remember much about the relationship with Leanne Rhymes. I'm not going to tell you any more. I'm going to make you go out and find it because it was, it was really cool. Um, if you're paying attention to DAV Magazine, as many of you do, read, how many of you read DAV Magazine cover to cover? That's awesome. So what you're doing every time you read DAV Magazine cover to cover is you're absorbing talking points. You're learning, you're learning the facts behind issues. And when there's a national story, your local media want to pick it up. They want a local perspective on a national story. And going through DAV Magazine will give you some ideas on how you can approach that. But Again, if, if we can help you, we will. Um, the DAV 200, um, what we did this year, I'll, I'll just tell you straight up what we did. We, th there was a mix of a donation, um, and there was some cost to DAV for that race. Um, and when we ran out of our budget, um, in terms of being able to provide the, the products for signs, um, what we did was we just doubled down to do more billboards, because we thought that would be more helpful for you guys um, than a one-day race. Um, web traffic was up almost 10% last year. Um, across the board, Twitter, um, we're blowing it out of the water. We just, we need to keep our foot on the gas on all this stuff. For next year, um, and this has been preempted, you know, uh, Barry, I think, mentioned this. We are thrilled. Um, we've been thrilled. Mike Wolf has been a tremendous friend to DAV. Um, but we're, you know, we're always focused on what's really going to move the needle for DAV. And, and this year we had an opportunity with ABC um, where we're going to have a full week on, on Millionaire. Um, 
So we're, we're thrilled with that. Good Morning America segment, ABC News, is a big national outlet. It's going to have a much larger footprint. It, we won't see as many things, um, but we'll see, a, we'll see a, a bigger audience when we hit it. We evaluate all these things based on the return on investment. Whenever we're spending a dime um, on anything in DAV, but especially on, on things that might seem uh, a little bit distance, distant from providing a direct service for veterans, we're extremely careful um, because what we're doing is taking an investment that donors have made in DAV and uh, as stewards, we're trying to get the very most for DAV that we can out of those dollars. And I think we're doing a pretty good job at it. Um, I'm proud of all the stuff that we're doing. Um, a lot's going on. We need to keep going. We need people, when you get those memos from National, um, we need you to open them. We need you to check out your leadership emails um, because when we need to activate, we need you. Um, and I hope that you guys will, will step up on that. I just, um, I have my staff here. Um, I've talked right over the top of them as I often do, so I'm sure they're thrilled with that. But if you have questions, I have my experts up here um, and we want to help. And if there's ever anything that we can do for you, um, and Mark will back this up because he's the one who told me this is how it works. If there's anything that we can do for you, we want to help you. Um, if it's going to help DAV, you're going to do, you're going to be more effective often than national can be. So do I have questions?